Hello everyone. This is my edit suite. This is where I put all of these lovely YouTube videos together. And I want to introduce this one to you and explain a little bit of the story behind it. Now it's winter in the UK now, which basically means that we've got salt on the roads, it's cold, rains most of the time, we don't have much daylight, and consequently, persuading people to lend me their lovely, beautiful, and very often classic cars for your viewing pleasure is a little bit more difficult. I still want to put content out there though, and so I'm seeking ways of doing that and basically keeping things fresh. Now I've been going back through the things that I've shot because I haven't shown you everything that I've shot, you know, not everything makes it, for various reasons. Now one thing that I haven't published so far is a trip I made to Spa. I was talking about it a lot and guys that have been watching my videos and subscribing for a while now may remember me talking about it, but the video never appeared. Well basically I went off to Spa to support my father who was racing a couple of classic motorbikes in a small French race series that he's taking part in. Unfortunately, things went a little bit wrong and the video really didn't go to plan. But seeing as I went all that way out there and I did film things and we did get some interesting footage, I thought that it would be worth sharing this with you guys as a little sort of extra video. There's not a lot of car content in it, but I hope you enjoy it. So we're going to pick up the action with me waiting to get on the channel tunnel and go over to France and then Belgium to join the action there. I've never been to Spa before and obviously it's one of the world's most famous racetracks and hopefully, hopefully on Saturday they will actually allow myself and pretty much all of the competitors that are there to ride around not only the circuit but also the old road circuit. So it's something they do most years apparently is they sort of close off the old circuit and uh, you can you can ride around it and that looks like something quite special to be a part of so hopefully I'll be able to film that I certainly will if I can but in any case I'm going to be trying to get loads and loads of nice footage and pictures of all sorts of fantastic two-wheeled machinery there may be some nice cars there if there are that's a bonus but mostly I'm going for the bikes so I'm about to get on the uh, channel tunnel this is probably a slightly boring section for UK viewers but I thought for uh, our friends in the USA you might be interested to uh, see how this actually works which here's a train you drive on the train train drives through a tunnel when it stops near in France it's quite simple sounding really isn't it Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Je suis GM. C'est maintenant le journal intime des Lotus. Et aujourd'hui, je vais au Belgique pour le Bakers Classic 2016. Don't worry, that's the extent of my French. I could also ask what color your pencil is and where the train station is, and um, if you have any brothers or sisters. That's uh, what they prioritise in school. I studied it for about three, three years, and it's kind of about all I can muster. Désolé, Monsieur Dick. Belgium now. So I said some time ago this wasn't going to be a lifestyle vlog, and here's why. This is my luxurious accommodation, and I can't quite imagine that anyone really is that interested in seeing what life is like in the back of a van. Good news is though, I am at Spa proper.
my dad's teammate turned up in the back of a circuit van. During a practice session, Richard had decided to take a slightly unusual line through Eau Rouge and learned very quickly quite how dangerous the curbs can be there, especially when they're slightly down. Fortunately, the rider escaped with only minor bruising. The bike, however, was not quite so lucky, but it is being rebuilt and will race again. So, after the events of the morning, things weren't looking too great. Now, the one thing that I had to look forward to was getting on the scooter that we brought with us and doing this parade lap around the circuit. The scooter's all ready. I put cameras on there, front and rear, so I could show you guys how amazing it is to go around Eau Rouge and then the old race circuit with these sort of 150, 200 other classic motorbikes. It was going to be fantastic. I was ready. I had my leathers on. I had my pass. I had everything. I rode up to the staging area, I got there, and this guy looks at me and goes, No scooter. Oh, great. Oh, well, you know, this was a, a, an official paddock bike, it had the proper stickers, it had everything, I had, I had the band, everything. The year before, people had been doing this on scooters, you know, my father had done it on a scooter before. We didn't know what the problem was. But the guy's adamant, no, no scooter, no, no. Yeah, I went to uh, the race directors, spoke to them, said, you know, why not? You said last year it was okay. You didn't tell anyone that they couldn't do it this year. You know, I attended the race briefing and everything, even though I wasn't riding, I still had a rider's pass. No, they weren't hearing any of it. So that was pretty heartbreaking. Uh, I was so keen to, to go out there and do this. That was more or less the main reason for, for taking the trip. Now we had one bike out of action and with these old race bikes they run a total loss battery system so the bike has no way of charging up its own batteries so basically you charge a battery put it on the bike the bike uses the battery when you come in you change them around and so we didn't have many spare batteries and so the idea of using uh, one of the bikes to do the parade lap was out of the question because it was then supposed to be used very shortly after so there wouldn't have been enough time to charge the batteries now as luck or a lack of luck would have it, because Richard had crashed his bike in the morning, we had a spare battery. So whilst I was getting pretty wicked off and about to uh, ride up back to uh, have a kip in the van because I was so frustrated at the uh, bureaucracy of the situation, uh, my dad quickly pulled me over. Uh, we put a, a spare battery on his full-on race bike. Uh, they chucked me on it and I rode down to the gates. The guys were already formed up, already there on the grid, getting ready to go and I went down and as I was going down it was like the end of Independence Day you know the the doors were closing and the doors were closing and I was trying to ride along and you know a race bike I mean I've got very very limited experience on a racing motorbike but they are so completely different to a normal bike you know I wasn't really getting the position right there's no there's no steering lock on the thing at all so I was trying to maneuver it through all these parked cars and stuff oh it's crazy I, I get to the end and I sort of you know I'm kind of trying to pray to this guy to, to let me through and he just goes <laughs> You know, now I look the part, you know, they let me through. Uh, I got on there and yeah, I did the lap and I have not one single scrap of footage um, to share. I'm going to show you a picture now, which is basically uh, what it looked like. And I am sort of way in the back of the, the, the grid here somewhere. And so yeah, we did one lap of uh, the circuit as it presently is. And then as you sort of end that lap, they spit you out onto the old road course and you drive the however many miles it is, it's a long course, on current public roads, and the police have shut it off, and the atmosphere was incredible. I mean, for a start, it's just amazing to be, you know, on Spa, you know, to actually go up Eau Rouge was just, you know, that's a bucket list item ticked. But then to do it with these, these hundreds of bikes surrounding you, and crowds lining the, the, the street, you know, I mean, uh, in the UK, we get people that move next to racetracks and then write in to complain about the noise. Over there, you know, these, these old women had come out of the houses where they lived on the side of the road and they were cheering and, and, and waving and there's people taking photos and stuff as you went past and it was just the most incredible experience and I'm so wicked off that I haven't got any footage of it uh, to show you, but, you know, that's life. And so, yeah, so uh, did that, job done, um, quite incredible. Um, went to bed reasonably happy, and then, um, yeah, next day, things didn't get that much better. Mm -hmm. 
racing continued and on that day, the Saturday, the headline event of the weekend took place, which is a four hour endurance race. Unusually the race started at 8pm and so went on long into the night. Dad's race was on the Sunday, everything was going pretty well, he was running fine about middle of the pack and then on about lap 3 or 4 he simply failed to come round. After trying to find him for about 10 minutes he eventually turned up having been through the uh, circuit hospital. He was fine, unfortunately like Richard the day before he'd had a little bit of a disagreement at Eau Rouge and his bike was then looking very second hand as well. So yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm sure you can probably see from that video why I didn't really release it at the time. It's only lately that I've sort of thought, well, I have all this footage, I, I really, really should share the story of what happened, and it, it was a good story, I think. Uh, both the bikes are pretty much nearly finished. Uh, you know, they've been away for the best part of six months being rebuilt. Both the riders are fine, you know, um, bruises, basically, for the most part. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you didn't so much, don't worry. There is plenty more car content coming for you guys. That is not stopping anytime soon. We have hit 900 subscribers, and that is amazing. Uh, thank you so very, very much. I noticed my Cayman GT4 video has been very, very popular, and I am doing my very, very best to do a follow-up in a similar vein that I hope you guys are really going to love. So keep watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.